we are painting the Stevens grocery store in Toronto. Sorry for those of you that voted for our Lincoln, our old buildings in Lincoln in our recent poll, our recent vote. But we'll get back to that. I'll get back to that with a that or a similar subject in a in a future um, in a future project. So, uh, what attracted us to this scene? Well, um, on the feedback from a lot of you, I think you like the brightness of the scene. It's a lovely, bright, sunny day. The shadows also was something else that you remarked on, and certainly that's that's what attracted me to the scene. Um, all of these lovely shadows are fantastic, and they've all got a a great shape. I like I like the angles, the nice angles of those shadows, and they're creating they're quite dark. Some of them they're creating some nice contrast in the scene that which we can exploit as well. And on the pat chat, we discussed the colors of the the shadows as well for example in there so shadows aren't gray of course shadows have some color there they're i mean like this white wall here um it's a reflective surface so it's it's sort of inheriting something maybe from the sky um something around it and then if i go down well actually the shadow going across the street that's quite that's quite cool there in the foreground but then as it goes towards the edge of the shadow, I reckon it gets a little bit warmer. Um, outside of the shadow areas, think about warm and cool. That curve on the corner there, I reckon is quite warm. And then a bit cooler over to the left, maybe a little bit cooler over to the right. So we'll, we'll, we need to, as we paint, we need to think about these sort of subtle um changes in warms and cools. So shadows was um, certainly something that attracted us to the scene. We've got lots of lines in the composition. All of these um, verticals, horizontals. Yeah, there's a little bit of perspective with the crossing here coming from the bottom left corner and a tiny, tiny bit with the, the shop. Uh, we've got a bit of perspective with the cables as well, the utility cables going down the street. Thinking about shapes, we've got the shapes of these signs, the yellow sign there, the, the back of that traffic light uh, against the, the slightly darker background. Yeah, so lots of lines, uh, the railings here as well, a little bit of the, the darker background. All of those planters, lots of, if you're into uh, plants and foliage and flowers, then there's, there's lots there to, to, uh, to catch your interest. And a figure, a figure or two. I, we discussed on Pat Chat the, the idea about having a car just where my cursor is there. And I'm going to keep things rather simple. I might put in a couple of figures. I'll come on to my little thumbnail sketch in a minute. But sorry, no car for me. But by all means, if you want to put in a car there, um, remember you left-hand driving countries. <laughs> We're in Canada here. So the car um, just there, if you put a car in there, maybe um, half in the shade, half in the sun. That'd be quite nice. Little contrast, a light car, maybe. And obviously going down the other way. And I discussed on Pat Chat, if you do that, a car going the other way. And some nice bright red tail lights, which might complement the Stephen sign. Now, as regards that sign, <laughs> you, do, you can't miss it, can you? It's right in the middle of the composition. Bright red. We were thinking about what red that that would be. It's a sort of middle red, a neutral red, um, and quite striking. I'm going to put it in. I know some of you may not want to, but I'm going to try and um, try and hone my sign writing skills and get that in. Try and get it in the mid. Try and get it mi middle placed within the rectangle um, that we've got. 
Something else that I will ignore, well, a few things actually. There's this quite nice screen covering the air conditioning unit. I'm going to remove that and imagine there's a square there, um, rather like that square there, this, I'm not sure what that is, something to do with the power, I guess. Uh, there's, lo there's lots of cameras here and um, loudspeakers and things. I think there were some cameras over on the right-hand side. Oh, and on the right-hand side, there's the Canadian flag, proves where we are. Um, on the right-hand side, you can just about see the, I reckon, the back of a car and something that's out of the car. And, and that's, that might be creating a little bit of shadow. So I'm not going to have the car. It's too far over on that right-hand side. So that, oh, top of the building, we've got that rooftop window, that dormer window that's sort of cut off in its prime at the top. It, I know some of you, and on Pat Chat, we went into Google Street View. If you do a Google search of Stephen's Grocery Store in Toronto, you're going to get exactly where the location is. And you can have a little bit of a butcher's around there on, on Street View going to... Um, the street view mode and you can then look up and you can see it's, it's quite a flat roof it's actually quite a simple roof to do so we've got to remember to um, imagine the building is just a little bit lower and I can squeeze in the top of that um, rooftop window it does look a little bit weird it cut off there like that right okay um, let me go back then and I would just give you my thoughts about the plan of approach on this one. Um, let me just uh, check and see if there's any questions. No, I don't think there are. Right. Um, this is my plan. Hopefully you can see this. Let me just adjust the angle a little bit. There we go. A pencil sketch and roughly drawing out the, the composition with some numbers. Numbers is my sequence. So you can make out here the building, um, the, verti the large vertical pole, the trees in the background, the crossing, a couple of figures. Right, I, number one, I'm gonna, there's a lot of white, well, there's a fair amount of white on, on the building. I'm gonna dirty it up a little bit, take off the white of the paper, particularly on the crossing so that the white stripes aren't pure white aren't pure paper just dirty as you would expect on a road on a busy road cars continually going down this road this is a one-way street down here they're not going to be white uh so that's number one number two the sky carefully paint around the building come down number two coming transferring to the the base color of the road the road that's in the sunlight getting a little bit warmer here and the pavement the sidewalk there as well so that is number two carefully painting around the building number three will be the roof and the wall of the building and the trees on the left hand side uh, i might start off on the basis i'm going to go that way around um actually i might do the trees first because if I'm doing number two first, the paper might be a little bit damp. If I then go in with number three, I'm going to get a soft edge around the top of the trees. I want to get a harder edge on the rooftop. So uh, mental note to myself, do the trees first, then the wall. Number four, the shadows. That's really where we're starting to pull it all together. Those really dark shadows. There's a little bit of a triangular shadow on the far side, uh, a little bit. Just look at the shapes of the shadows. They come out from, and look where they come out from. They come out from just below the sign. They go up a little bit and they slope down and they're sharp angle to the corner of the building. Uh, we've got that almost like a sort of dagger type shape there, triangular shape there um, coming from the right hand side. And in the foreground, we've got that shadow there. Might need to paint around some of the white stripes of the crossing and then just glaze over the, the, the white stripes that are in the shadows, the, the shadow that's being cast across the 
the bottom of the seam. Just go over with a little bit of glazing just to make it um, a little bit darker, okay? Uh, there'll be some nice shadows coming across the, the uh, window extension here, this angular window, and then a few shadows across the rooftops. Number five down here equals details. So I haven't put that in, but that's where I'm finalizing the painting and with a smaller brush, just pulling it all together, windows, the figures, um, maybe some flowers on the on the on the plants there as well. So that's the plan. Materials, Saunders Waterford, 100 percent cotton, cold press. 300 grams, 15 inches by 11. Colors are from Mark Jackman in the UK. My normal colors, neutral. I will try and remember to mention what colors I'm using as I'm going through. Neutral tint, burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, spring green, viridian green, cobalt green, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, English oxide or light red. That's actually, that's a brilliant color for that building. Um, the brick wall and cadmium orange, cadmium yellow, believe it or not, and a few gouache, opaque ish colors down here lavender, white, and a lemon, a lemon yellow. Uh, brush wise, my brush of the moment Tintoretto number six, series 1407. Uh, could be using a, a lot of the paint that this can be really nice for creating this nice little edges and and lines and shadows going across the building um yeah a few other brushes which i'll describe a square one a small round synthetic might need to use a really small one for the stevens sign um if i can't hack it with that that brush there can't get too too detailed then i might need to i don't normally do this but i need to <laughs> brush isn't straight got a kink in it um i might need to do a little bit of careful painting with that one okay let me just see if there's any questions then uh no no questions all right um yeah if some of your some of you that are watching live if your screen is buffering or trying to refresh just click on the refresh icon and it does help if you get a a good fast wi-fi connection as well right let me make a start then and the critical thing is that building making sure that window gets in as well um so maybe if i start with that that window up there somewhere So that's my rooftop window, and we will come down to the corner of the roof. Think about the angle of that roof as well. Okay. It's going up ever so slightly. I am not pressing down hard with my pencil just in case I make a mistake. I've got my got my rubber, my razor ready just in case. And then let's come down the building to the Stevens sign. We've got below the below the roof window, we've got that angular window with the three sides to it and a little bit of a fancy sort of tongue and groove uh, panelling below that. Uh, Stephen's sign, let's get that one in, the window there, it's halfway, the window's halfway. Halfway between there and the corner. That's 
the Stevens sign it does come out a little bit there. And then now I've got to be careful here because I have to place the bottom of the building correctly. The there's the the line, there's a dividing line between the brickwork and the um the white wall on the ground floor. We've got the window and then the planters. Uh, I'm not sure how many plants or colors are going to get in there. Um, Yeah, they kind of creep over to the right. Let's get in a couple more windows in here. I think there is another one over there. Let's put one in anyway. Let's go over the left-hand side now and the tree, the top of the trees. Well, they looking at reference points, the on the very left-hand side, they start about the same height as the on the building. They actually go down quite a lot. I'm not going to do that so much. I'm going to have mine come down to about there. I think it looks a bit odd. The, actually, the, the, the top of the trees, it comes down to the, the top of the sign. Um, I'll, I'll have that just go a little bit higher. The other side of the street so the road that goes around now that is coming around about halfway there so again look for reference points the corner of the street gentle curve around and almost horizontal edge of the pavement. The crossing, that is that sort of angle. And the other side is like that. The stripes across. A little bit like that. Actually, they need to be a little bit more horizontal. I knew I'd have to use this at some stage. Get this right. They are actually pretty much horizontal. Yeah, they might angle down a little bit more. Let's. It's quite an important element of the scene, so let's get this right. That's better. So dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light. Okay, light, 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 light. The pole to the left of the building with the the, um, the cables on it, that is around about here. The height of it is it's above the roof or above the edge of the roof. Now like that, try and get it. Try and get it parallel to the left hand side and vertical as well. Figures. Two figures, as I had in my, my little sketch here. Actually, my pole there on the thumbnail sketch was a little bit over to the left. You can never get things exactly right every single time. Now, this figure 
looking at where the figure is, the the head is almost well, it's just below the bottom of the sign and the shoulders are above the middle of the height of the building. And let's get the head in there. Bit of cross hatching to show which way the figure's going. And then we'll pop in another one. Perhaps they're just about to. About to. Cross the crossing. Perhaps they've been shopping, they've got a bag as well. Couple of figures there. I need to get in the square, the square shapes of the back of the traffic lights. So the there's an arm that comes out from the main pole. Let's get that in there. There are some square signs here. There's the one-way sign as well. <laughs> not sure how detailed I'm going to get with that. There we are. Um, I'm not going to draw in the cables. I will just freehand draw those in. There is quite a nice light. I think it's a light that, again, it's on like a, a sort of curved arm that comes out. I don't think I'll put that in. Well, I'm going to be checking now what, um, checking now that I've got everything in. Make some of these lines a little bit darker. So you can see what I'm doing. And this window's got, this window has three um, sections, panels to it. Maybe there's another window there. And we have on the right hand side another window there. Gosh, got a lot of detail. Quite simple windows though, not not too many, not too many, not too, the, the frames aren't very ornate. Quite simple left and right and in the middle, lined with that one we've got, again, just two sort of panes there. Stephen sign, Stephen sign. Oh, we've got the um, air conditioning box there. It's gonna create a nice shadow. Stephen sign, right. How many letters are there? One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the V's in the middle. V's in the middle. Um, so I'll draw it in lightly first. There's a little bit of a white space on the left hand side. S T E B E N apostrophe. S. Down the right hand side here, there's a, a vertical word grow straight. I'm not going to bother doing that. So I'll just make this drawing a little bit clearer about what I'm doing. Oh, the other thing on patch out is where there's a drain pipe here. We said we'd ignore that. Good choice, I reckon. It just doesn't do anything um, really for the composition. It, it's a funny angle as well. There's a, a downpipe that comes at an angle and it, it's got a funny bend there. 
and then at an angle it goes over the right hand side then it goes then it goes vertical as you'd expect with a downpipe but there must be a reason for the builders to put it at an angle and then another angle i guess because of the flow of water they wanted that kind of helps the flow of the water uh i'm not going to draw in the edge of the shadows the the shadows that we've got coming down here and here uh, there's the railing might use a little bit of white paint for that railing not sure at this stage a few little vertical post that rail have i got everything i think i've I think I'm about there with the drawing. Yeah, let me just see if you've got any questions. No, I don't think you have. I hope that's all clear for you. So going back to my plan, um, number one, with something dirty on the palette, just take off the white of the paper, perhaps on the this white wall here, just dull that down a little bit as well so mop brush and <laughs> make sure it's clean mop brush a uh, little bit of a little bit of blue for that wall some of the frames a sign as well. And picking up something of, off my palette from a previous painting and something quite, not a lot of water, so a, almost a dry brush and just dirty up. Dirty up the white of the pedestrian crossing. Now you, you might think, oh gosh, she's gone far too dark, but that will dry lighter and the dark around it will make it lighter as well. Okay. Right, just let this dry a little bit, especially the pedestrian, the pedestrian crossing, because I'm going to be coming down, going back to my plan coming down starting with the sky and then cover the air of the trees then come around so basically coming around the building it's going to dry quite nicely i think Back to my mop brush then, and let's mix up some sky color. I'm debating whether to paint around the the pole here. I think I might actually, rather than a little bit of cheating going in with a a sort of thick grayish opaqueish paint on top of the sky. I think I'll try and paint around that. Paint around that pole. Sky colour, cerulean, cobalt blue. Actually, it's a warm sky. That is quite a warm sky. Let's actually, I am going to put in a little bit of ultramarine blue into that. Yeah, that's better. A warm blue. Cobalt. Ultramarine. Mix enough for the sky area. There we go, it should be okay. And then apply
painting around that pole. And then around the window, we can get a little bit We can get a little bit lighter over to the right hand side. Down here as well. Doesn't matter if I go over the, the over the roof here because that's going to be darker. around the yellow sign. I'm weakening this sky mix now. The rectangular signs need to be symmetrical over the over the pole and then at the back of the street it's almost a light ochre color so i've just gone with a little bit of yellow ochre there Carefully paint around the figures. Where I am now, there's going to be a lot of shade there. But I'll keep my options open with the figures. And we are down to the road. Mop up that little bead. We're down to the road now. Road colour. Well, I'll, I'll keep mixing in this sky area here with that blue and warm it up a little bit with a little bit of burnt sienna, tiny bit of Alison crimson, burnt sienna, altering blue, a bit more burnt sienna. Again, remember it's going to dry a little bit lighter. Paint around the white stripes of the crossing. The pavement is a warmer colour, so I've just picked up some yellow ochre. Match the road. Up to my first. white stripe and there there are the the stripes uh, are are they, they, there's a boundary there's a there's a white line there and a white line here i'm not going to bother doing that keep it nice and simple with this painting around there's that first stripe now uh, there will be a lot of shadow 
going over where I'm painting now. You can see how bright it appears already. Don't worry about being so precise with the straightness of your edges because little bits of little bits of paint are chipped off. It's not perfect. And bottom left corner. Continue over with the road color, ultra in blue, burnt sienna. And also this, this way of me applying the paint with this sort of stabbing motion, it, it does subtly apply a little bit of different texture and very subtle lights and darks in the road surface. If I was just doing one long line here, you know, with my board on a slope, it would be a little bit too flat. And, and this is going to hopefully give it a li little, bit more, little bit more character to that road surface. And the bottom edge of the planters, pavement. Perhaps a little bit lighter on the right hand side. Oh, it was quite gray there. There we go. Now, meanwhile, the roof should be. I went over that with a little bit of the paint, so that's quite dry. So back to the plan. We've done number two. We sort of almost covered the whole scene apart from the building and some important objects. We are now down to the, the tree and the building. So let's do the tree the trees first of all on that far side. Now the green, it's not a bright green. Don't go, don't go too bright with the green. It's gonna bring it too far forwards. Uh, so I'm gonna use a little bit of bridging green, tiny bit of spring green here, or you could add a little bit of yellow to it and just keep mixing until you I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to this oops too much and just keep adding that green to it it's going to be a little bit thicker than the little bit thicker than the sky as regards the amount of water and i'm starting for these trees i'm starting from the outside of the canopy using a flat edge of my brush and just dragging into the center of the tree and leaving just a few gaps here and there where the, the sky is peeping through. I need to go a little bit stronger with this green. Bridging green. I should use a bit of burnt umber. That normally for me is quite a nice greenery for trees. Burnt umber, but mostly bridging green. I think at the moment for me, it's a little bit too weak. 
need to go thicker. That is a little bit better. Yeah, that's better. Now, there's going to be a shadow there. I'm going a little bit more solid as I come into the center of the tree. Paint around the yellow sign. over the other side. Again, top of the trees. Paint carefully around the pole and that rectangular sign. Over to the corner of the building. Basically filling in this gap here between the pole and a sign. And then we're going to, this is going to be a lot of shadow in here, so don't need to be too precise. Down there. Try and get a little bit of a soft edge in the distance. So I'm just using my finger to do a little bit of lifting off and just making that, that top edge a little bit softer. Okay, now for the building, roof and wall. The roof is a little bit darker than the wall. So I'm going to use the same brush, make sure I get all of that green paint off. Got a big bucket of water to the right. And something warmer now well that english oxide or light red maybe a little bit of to go a bit a tip bit cooler um so a bit of burnt sienna a bit of altering blue and just test that. Yeah, I think that's okay. This is where I need to be a little bit careful with my edge down to the bottom of the roof. English oxide, a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of ultra blue. Bottom of the rooftop window. 
Um, let's assume the roof there is the same color. And that window on the right hand side. Again, there'd be a lot of shadows. There's a shadow going right across that top right corner, maybe from a tree or something like that. Now for the wall, which is going to be more red. light red not too dark and that might be just a little bit too red actually Put in that. Change around the window. Get the left hand edge right as the bottom of the window. Actually, that window is more, it's more towards the bottom of that floor. And then other side now. Those windows should be about the same height, so let's go down a little bit and left and right, left and right. There. It doesn't matter you left little bits unpainted. There could be some lighter bricks catching the light or something. Just adds a little bit of freshness to it. And you could lift off in a few little places as well if you've got a, a tissue, um, paper towel. Which is actually a little bit lighter towards the top than the bottom. All right, I think that, is that number, <laughs> going back to my plan, is that number three all done? Yes, I think so, trees and building. Are there any questions, anyone? Let's just check. All right. Well, I think we're down to, 
stage four shadows then this is really where it's going to start um, being pulled together and i'm going to start on the left hand side and work my way across just checking the surface is dry there um yeah i think i'll do that shadow then that one then I'll work my way down, yeah, there, there, and then across the foreground, being left-handed. Right, the shadows, let's do a little bit of screen sharing. So shadows, so I'm going to be doing that one there. Look at that shape there, to zoom out a bit more. Uh, that shape there, then we've got a fairly organic top edge and a sharp edge, a hard edge there coming towards the corner of the building. This figure looks like it's creating a nice shadow to about there. We've got the shadow of the pole, the pole is in the light. Shadows on the rooftop, uh, there's a, I'm sure there's a tree on the right hand side. Shadows on the rooftop there, and then across the front of the building. Then I will do that angular shadow there, and then the foreground. There we are, <laughs> that's my plan. Right, back to me. Shadow color. As I said at the beginning, don't make it too um, gray, add in a color to it. I think the shadows in the background, they're, they're like a very dark green. And then we get to like a cool blue on the car shadow that's going across the road. So I will mix something dark green over here. Bridging green, altering blue, Alison, sorry. Uh, neutral tint and then come up into the canopy and just lightly with my brush create the form of those shadows of the base of the trees I don't know what's going on over the far side of the street. There's lots of shapes, but generally there's it looks like there's a sort of a a wall or something. Anyway, that sort of creates the, the shadow at the base of those trees. And now for the shadow going across the street from the building, quite dark, neutral tint, ultra blue. And we're going to be for me going to be going up to the these rectangular signs a bit more cutting around the figures again down to the shoulders around the head Uh, 
I need to be quite cool with these shadows. So I've added a bit of cobalt blue in there. <coughs> Excuse me. And get the edge of the shadow on the far side. It's bouncing. It's sort of hitting different objects over there. Shelters, street furniture, something. And then the shadow will come down to around about there. the shadow from the pole is something like that shadow from those figures there we go again like I did with the treetops just here and there Soften up those shadows. Right, rooftop. First of all, a little bit of blue, cobalt blue for the window frames. Apart from in places where those frames are catching the light. So imagine the light's catching that top, that window, but it's darker than the rest of the rooftop. So neutral tint, a little bit of cadmium red, And then to the right of the window, perhaps this roof is in the shade as well but so going darker with the, the the glazing on the windows later on now down to the bottom of the roof and not as dark a shadow as that but a a shadow comprising of altering blue a little bit of burnt sienna Actually, it's a little bit dark on the very left hand side. Don't want to make it too grey. And then ultra blue.
ultra in blue. A little bit of burnt sienna. And now a little bit of cobalt blue for the shadow on the window here. Shadow from the air conditioning unit. Then some shadow being created by that tree. Could have, done a bit, could have done a bit of wet in wet there. I'm just quickly going with some light blue, very weak blue paint. And now the shadow going across here. Let's get some Darker darker shadow the top of this wall Right, I need to get into the greenery actually of the uh, planters. Let me just get in that. Need to get in some greenery here for the foliage. I'll start off, I'm using a flat brush, some bright green for the tops of these planters. And then darker green for the base. Nothing too precise. You might want to if you're into these planters. You see lots of other photographs of this place. They've got lots of shelving units here selling, I guess, plants and uh, flowers. Um, a lot more than we've got in this photo. There we are. Now, back to the shadow. The Diagonal shadow here. Back with my mop brush and a blue, a blue shadow. Cobalt blue. Need to get the angle right. It's it's about 
it's about 35, 40 degrees off the horizontal, something like that. You can start it where you want to. Down to the tops of the planters. And then something darker, warmer. For the shadow on the road. Starting from around about here. Now, again, this is a very important angle to get because the shadow goes over the top of the pavement, then it comes down the gutter and then it goes off to one side. So another important angle to get right. It starts, imagine that that angle there is coming down to about there. So down to the edge of the pavement and then down. A little bit of a straight edge. And then this area here is going to be darker with the foliage. So I'll go back to my, my flat brush and neutral tint, bit of Viridian green and just create a sort of fairly organic edge. It's actually quite dark in there, this part of the shadow. And then we connect those two parts of the shadow together. And God, I've got this space here. Um, There we are, a few expressive brush marks. Nothing too detailed is on the right hand side there. Uh, right, I've got some shadows here. Back to back to my mop brush. Back to my mop brush and the shadows that are coming across. We've got a bit of a dark shadow on the wall from the window. comes down to the top of the white wall and then some diagonal shadows. I'm not sure what's what's causing them, what's creating them. Uh, it's, it's a cable of some sort over on the right hand side. And Yeah, I think that's it actually for there. Um, I've done the shadow there, uh, shadow there. And let's try and connect that a bit more as well. I don't want any white gaps at the base of that, at the base of those planters. Right, foreground shadow. Cool. 
cobalt blue. Cobalt blue. Fairly cool. So I'm just taking this sort of base, these base shadow mixes and then making them warmer or cooler as I, as I see. Now, another important angle, it's going, it's sort of, um, it's that sort of angle there. So we're just exposing a few of the, a couple of those white stripes. Maybe, maybe my foreground shadow is not as big as in the photo. I have a little bit more of the road showing, but let's go with this uh, cobalt blue and try to remember now where I had that, where I had that line. Let's go and hit the crossing there. And paint around these stripes again. Paint these a little bit darker. These that are in the these. These that are in the uh, shade. And there, something like that. Shall I go a little bit higher with that shadow? Let's go a little bit more in there. Um, again, not have not have too perfect an edge to it. Just mop that up there, not too too perfect an edge. So just soften it up a little bit, especially over to the left hand side. Next then, well, we'll let that dry, then we need to glaze over that. Let's get in the some of the windows, right? Windows, signs, bigger, and a bit more details on on the windows. First of all, the dark shop window of, of Stevens. Another important edge. I'm not sure what's in the shop window, but there's sort of some lighter vertical objects just showing up. Coming down to the top of the planters. little bit of a edging to the the sign perhaps there's a bit of shadow just underneath that top edge
There you go. Yellow sign. <laughs> Need to clean off my cadmium yellow down here. Get to the yellow in a minute. There we go. Actually, it's a little bit of, it's like an orangey yellow. Let's just add a bit of orange to that. That should be all right. There we are. Well, I have this yellow. Could be some yellow flowers. Um, some of the leaves are a little bit more yellow. Perhaps they're catching the light. On those, along those planters. Um, pole. The pole needs to be a little bit off white. And it's got a little bit of a shadow, got a little bit of a shadow created by those figures and Just the top bit is catching, getting that shadow. There we are. Just with this flat brush, I'll just Take the take the white off the paper off these windows. Figures. Smaller brush. Let's start with some flesh color first. Bit of light red, bit of cadmium orange, and two faces, arms. Difficult then to think of is what color shall I have for the clothing? Um, now in the in the photo, the figure has some quite bright orange clothing. I think we've got to keep it light. So maybe I have one that does have an orange. Let's go with that orange. Um, maybe this figure here. This figure here has got uh, something orange. The top and perhaps the left hand figure has got something. I'm using some lavender, a light blue. And then some legs, of course, uh, something darker. We use some dry brush marks for this. 
So and dry brush often gives a, a sense of a bit of movement in the figures. That's one. to the when well, I've got this brush get in the curve of the pavement then it, it goes a little bit flatter and then it just goes up a little bit joins a little step down let's do the one way sign paint around a little arrow i've got to be careful not to smudge the figures here and It starts so the arrow is pointing that way. Get the arrow pointing the right way. Just keep looking at the reference photo. So there's the back of the arrow. And then the actual arrow here is not massive. There we go. The traffic light's got a little bit of a shadow behind the three three lights. And it's connected. Some writing there. Back over the other side of the street. Start in a few more darks in there. Okay, just glaze over these stripes here. Uh, perhaps a little bit of a triangle. There. And not too dark, I still want it to. appear like white stripes in the shade. If your shadow, when you did the shadow in the foreground, if it was quite a transparent mix, you probably wouldn't need to do this. Uh, next, uh, windows, windows, windows. Uh, so can I do this with a flat brush? Check it's dry, first of all. The top windows, first of all. Quite cool, a dark, dark,
dark cool colour. Don't make them too perfect. And then there's windows there and the middle window here, right? Two narrow windows. Um, either side of the main one. And then right hand side. Two windows there. It's a lot more detail I would normally do, but it needs it. Now this little window here, this is lighter. There we go. What have I got to do next, Steve? <laughs> the Stephen sign, the cables. Let's do the cables. First of all, um, rig a brush. This is a Levinson rig a brush. Quite creates some nice fine, nice fine narrow lines. Something dark, not too dark, not black, and plenty of plenty of paint on the brush, and then. Thinking about, so there's one line coming down here, and it goes, disappears down the street. There's one coming like that. And then that disappears down the street. One line there. Gosh, they're going all over the place here. I think they're going to serve from a composition point of view to, to also draw your eye into the scene as well as that, that crossing and the shadows. Uh, they, they do have a, a purpose. There's a postal pole in the window. Um, Bit more definition to these windows. And top and bottom. Be careful here not to put in too much detail. Have a 
fascia board here on the on the window. Uh, let's try and connect those two figures a little bit more. There's some lines on the pavement that are suggestive of a, of a curve. And some lines on the road as well, where there's been some cracks in the road and it's been filled in with little bits of tar. Again, they're going to draw our eye into the scene. Dirty up this crossing a little bit more. There's the white railing. There's the white railing here. Back to my small round brush. Could use a rigger brush for this. White gouache. Could have done some painting around, like I did with the, the pole there, but not being too fussy. Now I need to get the thickness right, not too thick, so it's like a like a dry brush mark, not too wet so it goes all sort of milky um so it, it's i haven't used this white gouache for a bit so i'm having to work it a, um with, with some water and brush just to just to get the right kind of consistency and get a good edge on my brush as well and that that um fence it sort of starts about there And it goes into the shadows. And there's a few little verticals. Like that. Well, I've got this white paint. There are a few lighter cables catching the light. There's the arm of the traffic light as well. Another one going that way. Uh, there's a little bit of light on the side of that pole. Right down to Stephen's sign, and then we're, then I think we're done. I think we're done. Okay. Little brush. And <laughs> here we go. You only get one chance at this. Um, again, it's a bit like the white, it's a bit like the white gouache, not too. Not too thick, not too thin. And so this brush being so small, it doesn't hold a lot of water. So there's my S. And T 
y and then the V that should be in the middle. Try and get it symmetrical. The I get to this stage of the writing the word, I think, have I spelt it correctly? I think I have, yeah. What a simple word. Steve. And little apostrophe. And then the final S. There you go. Uh, well, I've got this red actually. Let's, I didn't say I was going to do this, but some of the flowers. I put the, uh, the Canadian flag over here, the maple, couldn't I? That red. Not too much. That's a bit of red over there. Uh, right, final checking, final checking. That window's not strictly speaking correct with the, with the, um, there's some tongue and groove there and some tongue and groove above, but it, Sort of looks okay. Right. Yeah, I, th I think I'm about done actually. We just. Just add a little bit more detail to some of these windows. That. Those two need to be equal size. I think if there's any architects out there, you're going to do really well with this uh, with this subject. Um, there's those there's sort of stones, bricks going across the top of the window. Uh, can I put anything more in the shop window? Something like that. A little bit of detail there. Damp sponge here. I'll just soften up some of these. Some of these shadows. So just dabbing at the surface, there's that tree here. I think it's creating a little bit of shadow. Yes, I think I am about done. Um, that shadow there does actually go over the Stephen sign as well. There we go. 
yeah i think i am done well thanks very much for watching and good luck with your efforts at doing that particularly those of you on patreon um and i very much look forward to um seeing seeing your your uh, paintings those of you on the relevant here on patreon for your video critique thanks for watching <laughs>